Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm here with Plato today and we're bringing you a story about the Barbie movie. Yes, it has made a billion dollars officially at the global box office in just two weeks, okay? Two weeks and some change, my friends. That is an insane amount of money to make in such a short period of time. It is the second highest grossing movie of 2023, right behind Super Mario Brothers. We're gonna be talking about that in a second. I also want people to understand that this is a huge achievement for a movie like this and for Warner Brothers. I think the last time a movie made this much money for Warner Bros, I mean, that was Harry Potter. It's like over 10 years ago, crazy amount of money that movie made too. And it has been a long time since they've had such a huge break like this. So I do think that this needs to be discussed, especially considering the contents of the movie, which are being marketed differently than the movie itself. And it's going to be really interesting to see how people react and how they talk about this film in the years to come, especially after it's had its day in the box office and people have actually had a chance to sit down and discuss it without being attacked by anti-male trolls everywhere. So let's check this out. Barbie is saying hiya to the Billion Dollar Club. Again, congratulations to Greta Gerwig, who literally just took parts of other movies and put it in her movie and then called it Barbie. Greta Gerwig's pink-coated fantasy comedy, which I think is a great way to describe it, pink-coated fantasy comedy, comedy at the end, specifically because there's only like a couple funny things in that movie, including Ken, which I do believe was unintentional, or it was intentional with the unintention of having him become more popular than Barbie herself being a factor. So. Let's discuss this. The movie has surpassed a billion dollars at the global box office, including 459 million in North America and 572 million internationally. This makes Gerwig the first ever solo female filmmaker with a billion dollar film. It's the first time for everything, right? I mean, it's a huge milestone, so I'm not gonna pretend that it's not a big thing. This is an achievement on a massive scale, absolutely. Three other billion dollar blockbusters were co-directed by women, including Frozen, Frozen 2, they both made over a billion, almost 1.5 for the sequel, both co-directed by Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck, as well as Captain Marvel for a billion, 1.1, co-directed by Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck. So those movies made a billion dollars being co-directed, so I guess his is her having her time in the sun, in the spotlight, because she was the only one to direct it and it made a billion dollars. Still, it's a gigantic achievement once again. Barbie is hitting the coveted milestone after just 17 days of release, becoming the fastest Warner Bros. release and eighth in the studio's 100-year history to join the Billion Dollar Club. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 previously held that record at 19 days. Again, that was over a decade ago. So it has been a long time since Warner Brothers have had a, a jump like this. It looks like their marketing was just enough to get people into the movies. Haha. <laughs> it's a good club to be in, says Jeff Goldstein, the studio's president of domestic distribution. Thanks to the amazing smashing buzz due to the marketing team, Barbie has remained number one at the box office for three consecutive weekends. And that's despite competition from TMNT, the new Ninja Turtles movie, Meg 2 about the giant shark, the trench. And Oppenheimer, obviously it was competing with Oppenheimer in the theater. It's already the second highest grossing movie of 2023 behind only Universal and Illumination's Super Mario Bros. movie, which earned over half a million domestically and 1.3 billion worldwide. So apparently Super Mario is still in the lead for total gross, although this movie is breaking records as the, you know, the first female director of this, you know, the first uh, film in 10 years to gross this much in just a short amount of time. It's hitting all kinds of records. Of course, Barbie is only the second blockbuster this year and the sixth of the pandemic era to cross a billion dollars following Spider-Man No Way Home, Top Gun Maverick, Ju Jurassic World Dominion, and Avatar The Way of Water, all films that I personally believe are superior to this film in every way. I don't think that this movie should be making as much money as it has, but this is why the marketing for the movie is so good and why it deserves such serious props. Because if anybody actually knew what was in this movie and paid attention to the woke messaging propaganda within it, I do not believe people would be going to see it as much as they already have. The rapturously reviewed Barbie opened on July 21st and smashed expectations with the $155 million domestic debut, ranking as the biggest opening weekend of 2023, as well as the best start for a film directed by a woman it arrived as a full-fledged phenomenon thanks to the marketing campaign of the year 
and stellar word of mouth to match. There was also hype from Barbenheimer. Of course, yes, the Barbenheimer memes were absolutely insane. People were making memes about Barbenheimer, just like Barbie driving in her car with a nuclear explosion going off in the background, or Oppenheimer being surrounded by Barbie dolls as him having an explosion behind him, you know, stuff like that. And I think it did make Japan upset in which they called out Warner Brothers and Warner Brothers was like, we're so sorry that we were just trying to promote our movie. How dare we? And Japan is like, don't you remember what she did? And everybody got their feelings hurt, which kind of sucked. <laughs> but this movie has caused all kinds of controversy. I know that if you saw the movie, you either left feeling that you liked it or you left feeling that you were betrayed and hated it. There are women I have seen who have left the movie saying that they loved it, but then there are women who have also seen the movie who have said they hated it and feel like it was a betrayal of, of Barbie towards women and young girls as well who are quite impressionable and that the movie spent most of its time hating on men and pushing woke propaganda rather than telling a cohesive plot. This plot, by the way, was stolen from a bunch of other movies that are far superior, like Enchanted, like the Lego movie, like that one movie played by Ryan Reynolds. I'm telling you, this movie just steals from other movies, but apparently it's popular enough to get people into seats. But yes, there was also hype from Barbenheimer, the nickname for the twin release date with Christopher Nolan's dark historical drama Oppenheimer, there were actually a lot of people who saw that movie. I liked the movie. I thought it was a little bit long as well. But there are people who said they didn't like it or that they liked the Barbie movie more than Oppenheimer. Honestly, I think that the two movies releasing at the same time hurt Oppenheimer because of the controversial nature of the craze behind Barbie and the marketing behind Barbie. It was just way too overwhelming for a movie like Oppenheimer. So I do think that no matter what, Barbie was destined to always do better than that movie because of the fact that they released at the same time. Gerwig, the Oscar-nominated director of Lady Bird and Little Women, co-wrote the screenplay with her partner Noah Baumbach. And Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling star as the stereotypical versions of Barbie and Ken who leave behind the dream house on a quest for self-discovery in the real world. And then they have the rest of the cast that were in that movie. The, look, the, the movie is making a lot of money, but I do stand behind my comments concerning the contents of this movie. And, and that it is not a film that is promoting what's great about Barbie. It's more like it's preaching about why being Barbie is bad and being a woman is bad. Following your maternal instincts is bad and that you need to be a career-based woman in a world run by men. Keep your mouth shut and just work the job, right? Leave all of your friends behind. I know there, there were a lot of memes about Ken, okay, and Kenergy and Kendom and that you are Knuff, okay? The people are like praising Ryan Gosling because of the fact that his performance in that film was so funny. But at the same time, I don't think that Greta Gerwig was expecting for Ken to be such a popular character, even more so than Barbie. And there's a reason for that. It's because audiences are starved for more characters like Ken who embrace the patriarchy rather than making a joke out of it, rather than making an enemy out of it every single time a movie comes out, feature a little bit of patriarchy. Ken is popular because of the fact that he steps away from the norm of that is Barbie and tries to be his own person legitimately, unlike Barbie who leaves all of her friends behind in the Barbie film and goes off to identify as a human. All right, people are like, oh, Ken is literally me. He's literally me. I'm Ken. Kenergy, Ken, and blah, blah, blah. Look, embracing the patriarchy may be fine and well for a lot of people, and maybe that was enough for them to enjoy the Barbie film, but... It was not enough for me. And all of that based energy that Ken was emanating from his plastic exterior was not enough to get him out of Barbie land. If you do not remember, at the end of Barbie land, he goes back to being subjugated by the other Barbies. Okay, after the, all the other Barbies are like, whoa, whoa, hey, all this fun, happy time you're having with these men, it's making you miserable. And then all the other Barbies are like, no, I'm having fun. I like it. I like uh, passing a drink over to Ken while he talks about Justice League. And like, no, no, you have to stop that. Remember? We're supposed to be dominating and being in charge of the men. You have to take back over immediately. All right. So at the end, Barbie's just like, hey, peace. I'm going to go actually be my own person. You Barbie dolls have a fun and splendid time subjugating these men and telling them what to do again. And meanwhile, Ken is the only character in this movie who doesn't get the closure that he deserves, ends up having a psychotic break right in front of Barbie. She lightly consoles him and says, they're their little buddy. And then they just go about their day. He doesn't get the girl. And then all the Kens go back to being the slaves, the mindless beach slaves of Barbie. And their only job is to do beach and to sit and beach each other off. 
That's the Barbie movie. And that's what people paid a billion dollars for. It is ridiculous that it made this amount of money. I can recognize that it's awesome that it made this amount of money, but this is one of the most woke movies to come out in a long time. And this movie has the same woke messaging that other films that, by the way, men and women have both been criticizing for months and maybe even years now. For some reason, all of that backlash, disdain, and critique is absent when it comes to the Barbie movie. And I'm not sure it's because it's a movie made for only women and it has pink plastered all over it. I don't know why people think that a polished turd is worth defending when they would go after any other turd in the business, but it is what it is. And this is about as unbiased as I can get in my view, because watching this movie, I did sit down with an open mind trying to watch it and find good things about it. And by the way, there are a few good things in this movie. There are a few good messages that I actually particularly enjoyed. But I, I've got to tell you, the most of the movie, it's just woke garbage. And perhaps there's a reason why people aren't talking about this movie. I, I notice here that if you see right above me, there are 18 likes and 28 dislikes. There are a lot of people who do not like this movie who are probably afraid to speak out because the amount of backlash that one gets for criticizing this movie is insurmountable. OK, I, most of my audience is about 85 to 95 percent male uh, based in the United States. Mostly I have a lot of uh, people who watch my content in the UK as well, but most of my audience is men. So when I put this review out for Barbie a, a week or so ago, I got completely ratioed. <laughs> my comments and my likes to dislike ratio were abysmal. I had like over 100 comments, mostly from women who were mad that I didn't like it. In my opinion, this movie has caused a whole lot more division than people would like to admit that it has. And when you have stories coming out about men saying that they need to change because their girlfriends watched the Barbie movie and told them that there were things wrong about them they need to, that they need to fix. Yeah, I'd say that this movie is causing division, okay? My, my video's sitting at what, like a 46, 47% like to dislike ratio? None of those people subscribe to me. None of those people watch my content. They probably saw my post on Twitter, clicked on the video just so they could chew me out and yell at me because I'm some kind of woman-hating misogynist who just wants a reason to stick it to women whenever I get a chance. And these people are psychotic. They are psychotic. But again, this is a controversial time that we're living in where movies that are woke garbage are happening to make a lot of money simply because of the fact that women just want a win. They really want to win. So some people are willing to let go of the obvious propaganda in the film and focus on the good parts of it, which is why everybody's talking about Ken and nobody's talking about Barbie. And that should be a red flag to you and tell you a lot of the quality of this film as a whole and who people are focusing on, which I think is also really important. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like it and share. And if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel. I look forward to seeing you all again next time. Say goodbye, Play-Doh.